So we got another great question from one of my subscribers and the question reads, I'm going to go ahead and read what he wrote me. Uh, my wife and I are preppers. We started a few years back after seeing how the country and world were going. I'm not sure if it's biblical or not, but I do think of Joseph when God told him to get ready and prepare, prepare for the seven year drought. We just see it as insurance and being prepared. What are your thoughts? I also like to watch prepping videos so I can learn. Uh, kind of like having a retirement fund as well, IRA and savings. I know it all will pass away, but I think it I think it's not a sin to prepare your family in case of emergency. What are your thoughts? So that's a good question, brother, and I'll do my best to answer it the best I can. First off, the Bible teaches that saving money is a wise practice for many different reasons. God is our source and provider for everything we need. Philippians 4.19 And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. One of the main ways God provides for us is through money, and it is our job to steward that money well. Matthew 25, 14 through 27 attests to that. Now, the important truth in all of this regarding money is to understand and deal with the fact that God will hold us accountable for how we use what, we, what he has given us in regards to money. So the answer, the answer to the question, is saving money and storing of food and goods, i.e. the prepper lifestyle, a sin? Well, it can be. If we're saving money out of the fear of the future, it shows we are not really trusting God to provide. Luke 12, 7. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Also, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Be very careful in your motives for why you do such things as a believer. But also, on the flip side, there is biblical cause for saving money. And we need to be able to grasp and deal with both sides of this coin here. Saving money demonstrates good stewardship of the resources God has given us. Proverbs 6, 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and its food at harvest. The Bible makes it clear that planning ahead and saving money makes it easier to accomplish goals and allows us to be more effective and efficient Christians, believers. Now, when we don't plan ahead and save money, we are more prone to go into debt, which the Bible tells us is unwise. Proverbs 22, 7. So you might be saying, OK, there's two sides to this coin. How do we bring all this together and make sense of it? And the chief way in which you will do that is by first seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things, therefore, will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Everything you do, do it unto his glory. If you save money, you save it so that you as a husband can prepare for your family, provide and prepare for your family, a home, food and clothing that you will ultimately give God glory for. And within the home, it's your job as the head of the home to always direct everything you're able to give to your family to God. OK, it's a great way to teach your children that everything we own, everything we have, the roof over your head, give God glory for that and allow your children to be raised with the mindset that reveals God's sovereignty in your life in regards to you being able to store money, save money, or store food to be prepared for the future. Um, everything you do, return credit to the Lord in praise. The minute what you do becomes about you and your ability to store up or save, that's when you begin to make money and store up foods and resources and idle, and that's the problem. Also, another question, are you generous with what you have stored up? Is it about you and yours or you and your neighbor as well? That's another thing you need to think about. It's not just about you, okay? Examine yourself and why you do what you do. Are your motives selfish or selfless? That's the question, and I hope that helps. There are clearly dangers in being wealthy, but there's also value. What would you say is the right way to be rich? Um, the right way to be rich is to be rich in good deeds. I mean, that's a quote from 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6 at the end. Or is it, is it 2 Timothy 4? I always get these mixed up. At any rate, uh, he says to the rich, it's, I think it's pretty, pretty, 1 Timothy 6 at near the end, where he says, to the rich I say, do not trust in your riches, but be rich in good deeds. So I'm, I'm assuming Riches have come in some way, and now Paul's dealing with that, not should you go there. He says something about that, namely, don't want to go there. Don't want to be rich. And that'd be 
I'll get to that in a minute, but if a person is rich, what do you say to them? And you, what you say to them is, don't trust your money and be rich in good deeds. Now that rich in good deeds is probably going to deplete their barns. I think we'll. I, I think a person who comes to Christ as a very, very rich person will start finding ways to divest himself of excesses. Now, he, he may do a foundation. That's what I do with my royalties. To protect myself from the royalties, create a foundation. So the royalties come to the foundation, and then you give it away. You have a ball, giving the money away. But it's protected from you. I can't have it. It's not, it's not mine to have a personal disposal over. And so I, I don't think God minds us being channels of a lot of money. If you make a lot of money, you give a lot of money. So who was it? Uh, uh, Laterno. He founded the Laterno Earth Moving Trucks that had wheels, you know, twice as tall as you are, and and uh, and started Laterno University. And he used to say about his big Earth Moving machines, "I love power." <laughs> And the story is that he tithed to himself. He made so much money, he tithed to himself and gave the rest of it away. Now, my guess is he was quite wealthy, probably with 10% of what he was making. And maybe that was enough or maybe it wasn't. But that's the kind of mentality you say to a rich person is, the world is telling you, if you make a lot, own the symbols of the fact that you make a lot. That's the way the world thinks. All the... All the uh, airplane magazines say that. You've earned it by a lazy boy. Well, what, is that, what does that mean? That means the chair you sit in should look like what you make. And my answer is, no, it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. It should look like Jesus is valuable, more valuable than chairs. That's what it should look like. And, and so uh, you say to, to rich people, be rich in good deeds, which means you start doing as many good deeds as you can, and on the way there, you, you live a kind of life that would make Jesus look like your treasure. Now, on the other end, should you ever want to go there, and, and Paul is just crystal clear, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into many senseless and hurtful temptations that bring the soul into ruin. Wanting to be rich is dangerous. So I preached that last Sunday. A guy comes up to me afterwards. He said, okay, I was kind of bothered by this sermon because I'm just starting a business and I really want it to succeed. To which I said, I don't, I don't think you were listening carefully because in, in that sermon, I had m made clear this. I said, not a problem. I hope you succeed like crazy. I, I hope you, your business grows to be worth billions of dollars and that you em, employ 500,000 people. I got zero problem. That's good for the world. If you're making something worthwhile or you're providing some service that's worthwhile and your employees are being treated justly and, and you're, my issue is what you gonna drive? Where are you going to live? How many houses are you going to have? How many boats are you going to have? How many suits are you going to have? And so on. Because there's no problem with money flowing through your hands. The problem is wanting to be rich. Meaning, have it. Have it. Own. Own. And I, I admit that that's a dangerous, dangerous call to say, go ahead, succeed all you want. Make all you want. But don't keep all you want. And don't buy all the symbols of, of wealth.